In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an adaptive card in Copilot Studio, asking for input from the user and then making use of Power Automate Flow to save the data into Dataverse backend. So let's jump into the demo. Yeah, so I have this uh, Copilot already created, uh, named as Girish Expense Claim Assistance. So uh, this is like a simple Copilot. Uh, doesn't do anything fancy. Uh, I'm going to make use of this. So going into topics, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a topic. Now I'm going to ask for a user input. So the so phrases can be, uh, say, user input. Okay, so it's, I'll just pick a simple phrase. Okay, uh, now from here, I'm going to rename this get input from adaptive card okay so it's a simple topic which will get input from an adaptive card now adaptive cards uh, adaptive cards are basically platform agnostic uh, user interface element which you can utilize within your uh, application so namely copilot studio now here what we are going to do we are going to uh, make use of ask with adaptive card so ask with adaptive card for this we need to first build an adaptive card now in adaptive card what we're going to do uh, so i'm into adaptivecards.io website so here you can find out schema explorer samples blog so if you want to see samples you can explore the samples there's a lot of blog items uh, created on adaptive cards uh, and you can view various uh, adaptive cards components over here so in the designer, if you go into the designer, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an adaptive card. Now, this I've already covered in one of the videos, so I'll be very quick in building those adaptive card. So first thing, what you need to do, click on new card and then click on blank card. Now, target version, uh, as you see over here, the selected target version 1.6 is greater than the version supported web what from framework web, web chat 1.3. So I'm going to select 1.3. Uh, just for a safe side uh, and then from here I'm going to start adding the input so input.text now this one uh, input.text will be uh, I'm going to use say first name so let me put in convention ac dash first name so ac means adaptive card okay and in the placeholder text I can put uh, first name and uh, I can make this mandatory as well so I'll just say required and say first name is mandatory okay so and from a label perspective i'm going to use first name so that's first name then i'm going to use uh input.text again uh and then this time i'm going to say ac dash last name as a id and this is last name so i'm going to copy this placeholder text and then again i'll make this as mandatory required and say last name is required and similarly, I can uh, add other things. Uh, I will add input.txt and I'll this, uh, this time I'm going to call this as ac-email. Uh, this is email address, email. Uh, required, no, that's fine. Uh, and I'll put a date of birth. So ac slash date of birth. So I'm just building an adaptive card over here. A couple of fields are mandatory, a couple of fields are not. And this is how it's formatted now. Now, uh, other thing to note, now we have put all the ID, like first name, last name, email, date of birth over here. Now I need to add an action set. So action set. Now action set basically I'll allow a user to submit this. Now submit or uh, style is uh, it's a positive. Uh, and action.submit. And I'll just call this as uh, AC dash submit okay. and associated inputs uh, automatic style positive action dot submit and I believe that's it okay uh, so this is how you basically submit the uh, information back to the uh, target application so I've got this adaptive card I'm gonna copy this adaptive card and let's see whether this adaptive card works or not so Let's go into the properties and then I'll just paste the adaptive card. 
and I'll click on save this topic has four errors all good so I'll click on save again so what we are doing is like we are taking an adaptive card form and then putting it in copilot now here adaptive card is loaded fine if you see the output it's ac date of birth ac email ac first name ac last name action submit id uh, so all all good uh, now here like we can after this we can send out a message and say uh, say thank you for your input okay so this is basically how the adaptive card will work now let's save this now once i saved it it, it is telling me that there are like a couple of errors right now why this error is because in the output we need to map it to a variable now variable now we need to make use of copilot variable now let me uh create a new variable over here and here i can uh, add various variables so i'll just name it where one where two where three so you can name depending on your requirement so i'll just click on select a variable create new select a variable create new and then we have four different variables now you can name your variable again if you go into where one and then you can say where dob and let me add here where dob and you can come here and you can call this as where email or you can come here and say where first name and here you can say come and say where last name so this is how you name the variable i'll click on save okay now adaptive card is done uh, everything is done i've sent a message as well now what we need to do we need to take this input and then give it to power automate so for that what we need, may need to do is like we may need to call an action now call an action i'll just click on create a flow so this will open microsoft power automate so what we're going to do we're going to take this input send it to power automate and then power automate will send it to the back end contact table now the contact table this is a contact table now contact table uh, there is a field name is full name email first name last name contact birthday so on and so forth so what i want is like first name last name email and birthday uh, to be saved okay so for that uh, once the adaptive card loads so here run a flow from copilot what i will say i will add an input okay so i'll say text so this is uh, say f name text l name email and dov okay so this is my uh, basic input now this what i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh, take this input and then i'm gonna add it into dataverse so dataverse if we go into dataverse so from a dataverse perspective i click on see more what i'm gonna do add a new row now add a new row where i will add it into the contact table so if i go to the contacts table it will load the contact table from a last name perspective i will add l name from email i will add email from first name i will add f name and for date of birth which is basically a birthday so let me search for birthday over here yep so birthday uh, what I'm going to do is like I cannot directly add a string value over here. So maybe I'll say pass date time and I will add a date string. So now the date string is basically dynamic content which is coming from date of birth. So this is how you basically add the uh, date time, right? And I'll click on save draft and I will publish this okay so let it save uh, coming back to your copilot i'll say click on done over here and i will it's already saved uh, so i'm gonna refresh this once this copilot is published or uh, once this uh, flow is published so this flow is now publishing so essentially what we're doing is basically taking an input from the adaptive card using power automate and then sending back to dataverse the whatever input we have received now i think this is done so what we need to do is like we need to click on refresh okay so refresh because the power automate which we have created which uh 
it won't show in your Copal Studio unless it is unless the screen is refreshed. So I'm just refreshing it so that you get to know that whenever you use this flow, uh, you need to provide the input. Now we are going to hook the Copilot with the Power Automate. Now let it load. So here, this is the input. So what we are going to do? Click on plus and now call an action now call an action uh let's see what we have named it uh oh we haven't named it correctly so what we need to do is like we need to name this correctly so we'll call it as uh, store uh, into contacts okay so this is store into contact this is my flow name and then i'll republish it again so the flow name is store into contacts Now this is done. Let me refresh it again. So I'm refreshing the copilot uh, just to get the reference of the Power Automate flow which I've just created. So my flow name is run a flow from copilot. Now here, once this flow loads and uh, once I open this topic in the copilot, I'm going to hook this copilot variable with the Power Automate variable. So here we need to add an action. So call an action and then here uh, I should be able to see so this flow name is oh it's still not saved run a flow from copilot so store contacts I don't know somehow it's not storing uh, it's not saving the name I'll just give it a try again. I'll just click on publish again. So it says store contacts is the name of the flow. And looks like it is published now. Let me refresh again. And now again, coming back to Copilot, we are going to connect to that flow so plus call an action and i see that store contacts okay so i'll click on store contacts now there are a couple of variables we need to hook so f name is a variable in power automate now we need to link the variable from the copilot so copilot equivalent is where first name uh, l name is where last name email is where email and now for where dop what we need to do is uh we need to make use of a conversion function so i'll go to formula and then i'll just say text and then i need to reference the variable which is date of birth now in the power effects how you can reference the variable is by using topic dot where dop so this is how you reference a variable because now we want to pass it as a text okay so we are passing this as a text now all good so what we can do we can just say click on save and also in power automate what we can do is like respond to copilot if you want to add an output we can add an output variable which will just suggest the status of the power automate run so this is simple now now here uh, I have not named the button. It is named as action.submit, but in the, the adaptive card, you can go here and then you can change the submit button name as well. Now, all good. What we will do is we will just test now. Now, what is the trigger phrase which we have given? We have given user input. Let me type in user input. And then now it has presented me with a form. So first name I'm gonna give uh, Anthony smith last name ac at abc.com and date of birth i'll just pick date of birth 2024 20, so i'll make it 1982 and i'll click on action.submit let's see what happens now it says processing so and it says thank you for your input so it looks like our flow has run successfully so you can verify the flow run just by going back into this flow and if you refresh this you should be able to see that this flow has succeeded now how to verify the output is you navigate to your contact table now this is a contact table 
Now I'm going to just refresh this contact table and see whether that input has come or not. Now, as you see over here, this record, Anthony Smith, this record we have just added, right? And it has correctly put the birthday, uh, first name, last name, email, uh, and uh, this is when it was created on, okay? So this is how you basically use an adaptive card to uh, get an input from the user and store that input back into the dataverse. So you, so the use case is abandoned you can use it for any application so this is just like one example i've given you and shown it to you now you can also tweak this further by adding a an output of your power automate flow because sometimes the flow may not succeed so you can add a power automate flow output and then once you use that output status you can check whether the flow has run successfully or not and if not then maybe you can show an error message to the user uh, citing for some more um, input so that's it folks this is how you basically use an adaptive card submit functions thanks for watching